It's a fake deliverance, but give him credit, he held on to his phone. What I want to do today is I want to look at a deliverance minister in action. Now, again, there's no such thing as this type of deliverance ministry that these people are purporting. We're going to look through just one of their typical deliverance uh, deliverance services and see what happens and see if what's happening, if we can find scriptures to go with it or if we find scriptures to go against it. What you're going to find is that what's happening here, you don't find uh, in the scriptures. You There'll be times where you won't even see a scripture to go along with it or to refute it because it's just not even contemplated. In other words, it is not in the Bible, which is the very definition of being unbiblical. And so we're going to look at Pagani. We're going to look at what he's doing. This is the great apostle Pagani. And let's see him. Now, he stated before about what his focus is and that it's really not really about deliverance. But that seems to be really what his focus is. He's got a book about it. He's in the movie and he's all around doing deliverance deliverance on different stages all over and what you will notice that is conspicuously absent is the gospel we'll come back to that in a little bit but let's just look at him we're going to just kind of just dissect what he's doing here it's not a very long video so let's go ahead and jump into it not today hallelujah hallelujah someone stand behind him young man now already the man's got his hands up don't know what's happening here except to say that why would a person who is demonized, possessed, whatever the term that you want to use. I don't, I don't really don't care what the term is you want to use, but already we see that he's got his hands up in the air. So it caught, it begs a question. What's going on here? The, is the demon praising God that that can only be answered, I guess, by him. Lord, give me a nice rumble sound. Follow me. Now, also, before we get going, notice he is also orchestrating the music. Why? Because the mood, the tone, things need to be set. So let's, we got the lighting set. Let's also set the music. So he's telling him, give me a nice little rumble tone. Well, what does that do? That, that increases this anxiety. It's like what you'd see in a movie where you hear music playing in the background to indicate that there is something dramatic happening. And that's what's happening here. Thank you so much. You're doing a great job. All right. Without feeling embarrassed. I'm not here to embarrass you, son. All right. But God has called me to be a surgical deliverance guy. Which means I'm not a clinical visit. You come on this table, we're going to get the tumor out. We're going to. We OK, now we, we don't find anything like that. I understand that our vernacular today is different than the vernacular for that day. But anything close to it, we don't find. God has called me to be like this in these different analogies. We don't see in the scriptures where either Jesus or the apostles who are ever casting a demon out. We never see them saying or setting the plate setting the table this is what is going to happen to you they just simply just they just simply just call the demon out we're going to cut you open get the tumor out send you on your way all right two things i'm going to ask that you do is number one be honest when i ask you what's bothering you and what's dealing here why because you're not possessed you're demonized now two things one he says we're going to cut it out get it all out and get you on your way well we're going to see if that's even what he's not that if that's what he does, but even if that's what he's trying to do. But then he says, I just want I, would, I just want you to be honest. Again, we don't see these sort of dialogues happening in the Bible. The closest thing that we can see is we see Jesus when he is coming out of the boat. He happens to be on the same plot of land where Legion is or this man is possessed by Legion and Legion sees him afar off. Now they are in the same vicinity. They are on a collision course. And so what does every demon do? They recognize and notice who Jesus is. And Jesus simply asks one question. He says, uh, what is your name? Indicating that there's, there's many monks. And then after that, the demons cast out. There's not a long dialogue. There's not an introduction. Hey, how you been? What's your name? What's going on? We don't see that. Which means you're still here somewhere. So I'm going to ask you your name, not the demon's name, your name. What's your name, young man? Terrence. Tim's? Terrence. 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 Okay, you go to this church? No? Okay. Again, we don't see anyone asking, hey, <clears throat> except for Jesus asking, uh, who is this in, uh, in response to Legion? We don't see them asking, well, who are, who are you? Now, they may have already known or what have you. But again, this little introduction, this open, this body, this clothes like we have in a sentence structure, we don't see that. But 
But then he asked uh, a question. Now, I'm hopeful that he's going to ask the right question or he's going to get to the, the heart of the matter, which is this person's salvation. You're going to find and you're going to hear that he never does, which is just sad. It's sad because it one, it tells you what their intention is. Again, how often do you ever see? Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen because I don't watch all of their, I don't see their stuff. Maybe it does happen because it would seem odd at some point in time to say, hey, hey, listen, what happened to the invitation? What happened to you wanting to bring Christ to people? What happened to you wanting to introduce Christ to these people? Isn't that true deliverance? They'll say so uh, on camera, but when they're actually in the field working, they don't. And so even here, they just don't. It's rare. It's just, well, I shouldn't say it's rare. It's just not the norm for them to want to introduce them to Christ. Let me ask you a question. Are you a member of any church? Or are you in transition looking for a church? I'm in a church right now. You're in a church right now. Okay. In your own words, Terrence, tell me what's going on. Because I've seen you struggling there. Just tell me what's going on. And I'll guide you through it and we'll see what the Holy Spirit has and we'll help you get set free. Tell me what's on your mind. Um, like I have been having like a lot of like dreams and sexual dreams and I've been in different type of relationships hooking up with everybody Even I had like male and female partners. Okay. And I had left that lifestyle alone. Okay. We're gonna stop right there Now a couple of things just a deliverance ministry aside just in the uh, the consultation side just when you are counseling someone He's, he's making a statement and he's going somewhere. So even if you find it, you want to go ahead and counsel the person on stage. The man indicated that he left that lifestyle, uh, but you want to kind of bring him that you're not fleshing this thing out. But I understand you can't go too long with this because this is for theatrics. And you're going to see this in a, in a second, how we know this is all about a show, all about theatrics, because he's going to do something with other people who seemingly want to be delivered, though they won't actually be delivered. Not this way, but that's just not how you even deal with someone who is opening up. Again, we don't see demons actually, or the people actually open up the folks that are oppressed, depressed, possessed, those who are demonized. We don't actually see them opening up and tell them, hey, this is what's going on in my life. Hey, yeah, my, my, my childhood is this way. My father left me. My mother wasn't a good mother. She made us eat uh, cream of wheat every day. That, those, those sort of things. We don't see that happening in the Bible. All right, immediately the demon of perversion is already manifesting. Generational curse of perversion, lift your hands. Lift your hands, Terrence. Now, I also want to deal with this. He says this generational curse of perversion. We need to understand that there is no such thing as generational curses. We've covered this before. Under the Old Testament, under the law, you would see these generational curses. And there was a proverb that would be associated with these generational curses, such as it would go like this, that... The children's teeth are set on edge because the father ate sour grapes. As a matter of fact, if we go to Jeremiah 31, let's start in verse 27. We'll see this prophecy coming out to say that this these generational curses will be gone. He says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that I have watched over them to pluck up, to break down, to overthrow, to destroy, and to bring harm. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. But he says, in those days, they shall no longer say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. In other words, this proverb, this statement will no longer be the case. He says, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Each man who eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. And so when someone is teaching that, I'm breaking generational curses. You're not breaking it. It's already gone. These curses that's brought about on these different generations as a result of what the fathers did, then that's gone according to the Bible. Now, are there consequences to what a parent may have done? You grew up in a household and the parents didn't work. And so that means you grew up in a household where, where, where there was poverty or you grew up in a household where there was uh, abuse. Well, there's going to be some consequences, but that's not the same as a generational curse. And so that's just something that a preacher a pastor ought to know. All right. Generational curse of perversion. Demon of incubus. Demon of incubus. Demon of incubus. You now, the question is, first of all, this demon of perversion, demon of incubus, there is no such thing as a demon of incubus or succubus. 
Uh, I've covered that before. But notice, this man is playing along with it because he just says demon of incubus and then there's something that's happening. He just kind of he just kind of moves. Well, that's that's just playing along with this. Start surfacing now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Messiah of Israel. Come up and out. Up and out of Terence. Now in the name of Jesus. Demon of succubus. Out. Out. Succubus spirit. Go. Go. Now he just called incubus out and go. Now succubus out and go. So is he, according to the way he's doing it, is he actually being delivered or, or what? Let's just see if, if now, what, according to what Pagani is doing, the demon should be out. Go! 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 Go now in the name of Jesus. Okay. I know you're not used to this. You're going to let him go. The devil ain't got no power here in Jesus' mighty name. See this right here? These are false threats. Well, the question is, why are you holding them in the first place? What's the point of it? We, we certainly, again, don't see this pattern. There's never any time in the scripture where someone is, is possessed, oppressed, demonized. Whatever the word even is, we never see someone standing behind him. As a matter of fact, if you go back and watch the video again, you'll notice the man is, when he's telling him to come up and out, the man behind him, who's a bigger guy, is lifting this younger fella up. Spirit of masturbation come out of his hands now in the name of Jesus. Release out of his hands now in Jesus mighty name. Go! Out! 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 Now! 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 Now one of the things that, that makes you ask, that, that the question needs to be asked is, where is it that you only cast out a certain demon? In other words, if there are multiple demons or what have you i'm only casting out one i'll get the i'll get the next demon or the third demon the next go around or i'll do them in stages we don't even see that in the bible again even if we're going to use the pattern of jesus which I, it'd be difficult to use him as a pattern because he's god but still when he cast legion out it wasn't take this one out this one out this one out and so forth no gone at the same time in the name of jesus now terrence son you're in there i know you're in there son we're going to help you get set free. Go now. Succubus, go now in the name of Jesus. Out. Out. Now, I thought you already brought them out. That's that's the point. That's the, that's one of the issues. By the way, interesting interesting tidbit or interesting thing that I've noticed. Typically, when, they, when these guys would do their deliverance ministries, especially if the person is away from them, when they do a Zoom meeting, one online, what is the the item, the prop of choice? It tends to be a trash can. So they can throw up or spit up. They don't throw up back, so they spit up. They just spit, which anyone can spit on command. But you ever notice, though, that when they're doing it and they're face-to-face -face with the person, the person in front of them, that person isn't spitting anymore. Why? Because I think the people, the, the deliverance ministers realize, and I call them deliverance ministers, kind of just in air quotes, uh, tongue-in-cheek, because it's not what, they're really, what they really are. But they don't want anyone spitting on them or close to them. I, mean, I don't know if you, any of you guys ever picked up on that or not, but that's just something worth noticing. When the when they're away from them, here, give them a trash can. When it's, when I'm doing it and I've got some helpers, here, give them a trash can. But when they're by me, no, none of that spitting up stuff. Out, 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 five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I don't recall, I'm sorry, but never recall, even in the Bible, seeing a countdown. Why Why the countdown? But why are you saying 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go, if you already told them to go? They're just repeating, go, 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 go. We just don't see this in the Bible. He came to set the captives free. I said he came to set the captives free. Okay, so let's go to this passage here, Luke 4, 18. He says, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, this is Jesus making this statement, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty or to set free those who are captive or those who are oppressed. But notice what he also says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In other words, I'm doing this as I'm proclaiming salvation. 
they're not doing this. And, and, and it begs the question, if he came to set the captives free, how come in your world, the Demon Slayer world, or any of these other folks who do an exorcism, how come in your world, they're never set free? He came to set the captives free, but he doesn't. Remember, the Bible says that whom the Son says free is free in this, but on the screen as well, in John 8, 36, he says, they answered him, Abraham is our father. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong passage. Go up to 30, 36, there we are. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Now, this is speaking of salvation, but indeed, without question, thoroughly, that's this word, ontos, ontos, which is, this is thoroughly happening. This is really, you are truly free. Well, so if he came to set you free, you're free indeed but you're not, well, now we've got a problem. It seems to be that they're only free indeed when they indeed set you free, not when Jesus does so. And that seems to be a little bit on the line of blasphemous. He came to set the captives free. Jesus is Lord. I said, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Open your mouth and worship him for the next 30 seconds. Well, if Jesus is Lord, and I agree, if Jesus is Lord, why isn't that what you're preaching to this person? Why? Again, this never came, comes up. You you don't bring up his relationship with Christ. You don't ascertain is he saved or not. Now, he says, he, well, he didn't even say that he's engaged in anything. He said that was in his past. Whether he is or isn't, uh, find out. But then we don't know. We don't know if this person is a believer. We don't know if this person is a believer now. I've got some suspicions one in one direction. I'll hold those. But still, notice what he's not doing. He's not doing the job of a pastor to proclaim the gospel. That's what sets people free. But rather, it's a it's more of a circus. It's more of a show, entertainment. You got the music going now. They're hitting the right key. And you got the crowd involved as well. And so now we've got what it ends up becoming instead of a deliverance ministry, actual true deliverance. It becomes more of a pep rally, but a pep rally for them. Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, I'm just trying to envision Jesus or Peter or John or James or Paul doing that. I, it's just kind of hard to imagine that happening. Generational curse of rejection and abandonment. Go. How do you get rid of the generational curse of rejection and abandonment? Isn't that what someone else does? That's not you. But again, you're getting rid of all of these demons, I guess, in stages, all these curses in stages. Why not just at one in one fell swoop? Because even then, it, even the pattern of the Bible is when it's happened is all in one fell swoop. Go, go now. Out now. Out now. Out Bring her up here. Bring her up here. Brother. Wherever the devil's manifesting, bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Now, in the now, the issue is what he just said. He's he's calling folks up wherever the devil is manifesting. Well, in this guy, the devil wasn't manifesting earlier, but fine. But this person, the the devil is so called manifesting. Those are the only folks you're going to deal with, huh? Well, yeah, because that makes good theater. In the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, come, go, leave this body in Jesus' name. Don't worry, son. We're going to find every devil hiding in this body. We're going to find every devil. Oh, yeah. Well, if you, you don't have to find them. If you've got the power to call them out, just call them out. Call out every single one, every demon in the name of Jesus. Or how about this? How about just how about just do it all in one fell swoop? How about you do this? What if you actually did what the Bible says? The Bible says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. That also includes demons. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your, your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So looks like that's, that's the pattern right there. Follow, follow that. That's why he says, if any among you are suffering, call for the elders in this prayer of faith. Um, which is regarding salvation, that's what's going to save you. But that's never brought up. There's no, why do that? That that doesn't sell. That doesn't sell tickets. Doesn't sell. We, we can't get the music playing for that. Well, in some churches you could, but this one, no. We've got to see some action. 
Why? Because Jesus is Lord. Where you coming? Where you going? Go now in Jesus' mighty name. Loose him now. How are we even saying that Jesus is Lord to this person who doesn't know inwardly that Jesus is Lord? Jesus, if the person is not a believer, then Jesus is not his Lord. He's not Lord to him. Thank you, Father. Now grab him again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hi, Terrence. Everybody say hi, Terrence. Everybody say we love you. This is where it's getting, this is just ridiculous. Now let's get the crowd involved. Hi, Terrence. Everybody in the audience say hi, Terrence. We love you, Terrence. Terrence! Love you. Everybody repeat after me. Terrence, you're going to get delivered right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. But I thought he was delivered. You keep saying, get out, get out, get out. He falls to the ground. Well, okay. Why don't you cut to the chase? Stop the falling to the ground. Stop the this, stop the that. Stop the calling demon of this, demon of that, and so forth with the theatrics, because truth be told, nothing looks like it's happened to, to Terrence anyway, but he hadn't gotten delivered yet, but he's getting ready to get delivered. Okay. Everybody repeat after me, Satan, get out of his body in Jesus' name. Again, I don't know what's happening here. Everyone, everyone repeat after me. What does that do? Go! Go! Yeah. Oh, you're a work in progress, Terrence. You're a work in progress. Lower it. See? Make sure you control the music. Lower it. Bring it. Bring this down. I can't. I can't. The demon can't hear me with all this music. We got to we bring it. Bring it down. There's got. There's got to be some. Some dynamics. Highs and lows. The lows and then the 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 uh, the reverb in the in the instruments to kind of add to the drama and then let it crescendo up when things are going. Yeah, that's how we do this thing. See, deliverance is not a power encounter. It's a truth encounter, son. And love is gonna flush out every spirit that's there. Go. Love. Holy Spirit, fill them with the love, the love of God. Well, why would the Holy Spirit fill him with the love of God if he ha doesn't know Christ, if he doesn't know uh, who God is? Now, we're told, because this is how this works, we, we are new creatures. Old things have um, have gone away, behold, all things become new. And then he says that he, all of this is from God. 2 Corinthians 5, now verse 18, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, those who are saved have been reconciled, and then those of us who are saved would also, even this pastor, should be involved in the ministry of reconciliation. So our job is to reconcile people back to or reconcile people to God. But that's not what's happening here. Love of God. 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 I command every spirit that came in this body as a result of opening doors through sexual perversion, fornication, orgies, lustful encounters with men and women. All of you go, go, go out, out. All of you, all of you in the name of Jesus, come out of his legs, come out of his feet, come out of his torso, come out of his hands, come out of his head, come out of his shoulder. Leave this body in Jesus mighty name. And again, there's no good deliverance ministry worth his salt if he does not at some point in time speak in tongues. And I need you to come out of his hands. I need you to come out of his, his feet. I need you to come out of his torso. I need you to come out of his throat. I need you to come out of his ankles. I need you to come out of every portion of the body. Those that I've named and not named fingernails, eyelashes, earlobes, everything. This is this is really comedy now. All right. Turn it up. So, now, Terrence, you're going to be a work in progress. But we don't leave houses empty. Okay, how's it going to be a work in progress, but we don't leave houses empty? What do you mean work in progress? He's going to, it's going to take some time or this is confusing. As you raise your hands, the Holy Spirit's going to fill every empty area. There it goes. Why would the Holy Spirit fill him with every empty area if he is not a believer? You know, if you become a Christian, if you become a believer, put your faith in Christ, well, then the Bible is clear that you will have the Holy Spirit. But that's not what's happening here at all. There it goes. Five, four, three, two, one. Take it. There it goes. So another countdown. The only thing is on this countdown, nothing happened when it got to one. And even when he yelled the word, did he take it? 
nothing happened. So y'all might want to get your coordination down a little bit better. Holy Spirit, fill. Fill now in the name of Jesus. Fill now in the name of Jesus. Fill now in the name of Jesus. Who was the one that was manifesting? Bring her up here. Bring her up here. Stay right there. Stay right there. I got you. Come up here. So who else is manifesting? Bring, bring, not, not you. Not you. Let me get her. Why? First of all, it should be noted that in the Bible, we don't have one instance, whether it's Jesus, whether it's one of the apostles, we don't have one instance where there, where it at least is recorded mass deliverance. We don't, we don't, we don't have that. But for the sake of that argument, let's, let's just say it, there, there could be, there could be, but still, when did he say, not you, let me get this one first and then you. And again, still, we haven't seen, we haven't seen uh, the gospel presented to poor Terrence. Poor Terrence is there. Uh, I don't know if he's a, a willing participant or not, if he's just being duped, if he's gullible. I don't know. Because sometimes the, the atmosphere can take over and you can think this is what's supposed to happen. If it's in my mind, this is what's supposed to be happening. And then so what do you do? If you think it's supposed to be happening, you do it. The same thing, this phenomenon of people being slain in the spirit happens all the time where there is somebody who they see others who stand in line, got their hands up and they touch them and then they fall out. Well, I love the Lord too. The Holy Spirit is in me. And so I'm going to fall out too. You don't say that, but it just happens. It is easy for it to happen. As a matter of fact, how easy is that for it to happen? It's so easy for it to happen when you've got your hands up, you're standing, um, you are yielding because you don't know any better. You're yielding, even though you have not read, you've read your Bible a few times, but you have not read this ever happening in the Bible, but it's okay though. It doesn't have to happen in the Bible. As long as you've seen it happen in this church on that YouTube channel over here on this TV station. As long as you've seen it happen and it's been happening in this church and there's a fever pitch, the music is up and so forth and people are cheering and so forth. And I'm pretty sure there's about seven, eight, nine, ten people speaking in tongues, no interpreter. That That's fine. As long as it happens here, it doesn't have to happen in the Bible. And so your hands are up, you're vulnerable. And what happens? You just yield it because you are desiring in your heart. You truly want to feel the move of the Holy Spirit. Forget the fact of uh, getting his word. Forget that. You truly want to feel the Holy Spirit. You want to feel a move of the Spirit. And so your hands are up and he just touched your head. Well, how much pressure, how much force does it take for you to fall backwards? Think about it. Not a lot. Not a lot. That Which is why we don't, when we stand, we stand in a certain way to where we can balance ourselves so we don't just fall backwards. Why? Because our feet face forward. Our bracing is in forward. So when someone pushes you, and if you didn't do it, you'll you'll just fall back. And, so, and because you are yielded and you don't want to, as some might even tell you, don't quench the spirit. Let him, let, let, let him have his way. You feel yourself falling back, so you fall back. And then you're not worried because you know there's somebody back there to catch you. Now, if you knew there was someone back there, rarely will you see someone falling backwards who knows there's no one there to catch you. There's no catcher. Uh, that ought to be a, a spirit gift, shouldn't it? That should be the spiritual gift of catcher. We don't, but we don't have that in the Bible. But what the Bible does say, he says in 1 John 4, he says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Why? For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Well, here what we don't have here is we don't have anyone confessing Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. We don't have anyone confessing Jesus Christ anything. That's a problem. But you are to test the spirits. How? Not comparing it to this church, that church, that church. No, by comparing it to what the word says. You do know the word, right? The word that was given to us by the Holy Spirit. That's how we go and test those things. And so... This it's not that difficult, but let's give Pagani one last shot to see if uh, the gospel is going to be preached. If that's even a concern, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm being too harsh on Mr. Pagani and that he is going to share the gospel with this man. Understand that's the first and most important thing. Hey, don't go nowhere, son. Come up here. Lower it a little bit. Take him to the side. High five. There you go. Hey. That's it. That's it. You get a high five. That's it. Take him to the side. High five. Good job. Get him out of here. Next. That's how unbiblical this is. We know for a fact, one, there's nobody, and I mean nobody in the Bible, who had the Holy Spirit, who had 
any sort of demonic encounters, not one. Never in the Bible after the founding of the Holy Spirit, when people groups received the Holy Spirit, we don't even see it brought up. Paul in his writings to the churches, Peter in his writings, James, Jude, John, none of them tell us anything about demons being cast out. None of them. Why? Well, they don't have to. Their goal is to preach the gospel because once the once the spirit of the Lord is in you, then you're good. That's why John says, uh, greater is he, that is the spirit of God that's in you, than he that's in the world. Well, who's in the world? Whatever, demon, devil, you name it. The spirit of God is greater than any of that. And so there's no way that a demon can uproot the spirit of God. Can you kick the spirit of God out? No, he was given as a down payment as a deposit for every believer until we obtain our heavenly inheritance. That's Bible. Also notice, conspicuously, conspicuously absent in Pagani's presentation is the word of God. Is the word of God. Uh, we see oftentimes uh, when, when these people have these interactions, we see, we'll see from time to time some quoting of scriptures. When Jesus met, when, when Jesus is speaking with the devil, when the devil is trying to tempt him, what does Jesus give him the word? But we don't see this here. Why? Because that lets us know really what their focus is. Their focus is not the gospel. If it were, then that would be first and foremost. That would be the full uh, and main thrust of their ministries. But it's not. Ask yourself why these so-called ministries don't make the word of God the most important thing. Ask yourself that because they're not concerned about it. It's nothing stopping you from, from promoting the word of God. There's nothing stopping you from pushing the word of God except you or your desire, or I should say your lack thereof. So when you see this stuff, it's not difficult or hard to see where it's wrong. It's not difficult or hard to parse it and figure out this isn't of God. And if you see it, don't, you don't listen. You don't have to give bad doctrine the benefit of the doubt. You don't have to give theatrics and sin the benefit of the doubt. No, this is wrong. Now, you might want to give the person the benefit of the doubt. In other, in other words, that they might just be acting in ignorance. Now, the person who's doing it, who's been doing it, after a while, the benefit of the doubt is gone. You're not doing it out of ignorance. You're doing it out of greed. You're doing it out of a desire to keep going what you've got going. Don't let a good thing stop. And that's why you see this happen. That's why you don't, because again, there's no reason for him not to offer the gospel to this young man. There's no reason except other than it's just not that important. And because it's not that important, it's easy to see why someone can say this is clearly not of God. Amen.